is exciting. Dangerous. Troubled. That woman is not wearing underwear. Is that all you can think about? Food and sex? Yes. Please, focus. Look out! <laughs> No time for small talk. We're late. Petty, hold the elevator. Petty. I think Louise is so sweet. I think this woman is wearing underwear. I think there's too many people in this elevator. And I think you are all idiots. Let's go to work. Which is why I think the research computer system needs to be updated. Herman here has come up with several options that will ease the transition. Herman. Well, first of all... Wrap it up, Sherman. I have the attention span of a five-year-old. <laughs> just a second, Jim. This is gonna cost money. A new computer might not be the way to go. Oh, damn it, Harris. It'll be like Star Trek. The computer will talk to us, right, Sherman? I don't think so, Mr. Crawford. What the hell are you wasting my time for? <laughs> well, it will increase productivity in the long run. So, where's my golf bag? <laughs> Not so fast. This is an expensive proposition. All right, all right, we'll ask old man Waterman. Well, Waterman, what's it gonna be? <laughs> Good God, this man's dead. <laughs> Rack and you bored him to death. All right, everyone calm down. I'll call for an ambulance. Yeah! Calm down. Everything's gonna be okay. But a man died touching me! I can't believe this. You're right. I thought for sure Bracken would go first. <laughs> for God's sake, man, get some exercise. <laughs> Louise, didn't you notice something was wrong? I thought he just beat a Move him out, Sherman. He's starting to go bad. <laughs> just a minute, Crawford. You don't give orders. You're not in charge. We'll see about that. Um, I guess I'll take him to the lobby and wait for the ambulance. Oh, the poor man. I can't believe he's dead. Is that a Rolex? Herman, wait up. Ah, oh, what a boring funeral. Eddie, what were you expecting? The guy was loaded. You'd think he'd spring for a band or magician something. <laughs> Eddie, it's a funeral, not a party. When I die, there is going to be dancing, there is going to be a celebration. You're telling me. <laughs> Eddie's right, that funeral was a drag. Didn't Waterton know any babe born in this century? I had to sit next to this old woman who went on and on about how the talkies ruined her acting career. Well, I'm sure wherever he is, Mr. Waterton is just a little bit sadder knowing you didn't score at his funeral. <laughs> God, Jay, no. <laughs> Define score. <laughs> Can't deal with this. Next time you feel like sharing something intimate with me, don't. She has a friend for you. <laughs> Goodbye, Jay. Can't believe Mr. Waterton's gone. Who's going to replace him? Well, from what I hear, there's going to be a power struggle between Crawford and Harris. But that shouldn't affect the research department. Let's just keep our noses clean and stick to our business. Crawford. He wants you to meet him. He's in the elevator. We make our move tonight. What move? Now the old coot's dead, I'm ready to take over. <laughs> well, coot, sir, you were a pallbearer at his funeral. You, you cried as you placed the casket in the grave. Sherman, how long must I grieve? <laughs> the end of the day would be nice. I have a plan to ensure my appointment as president of this company, and I need your help. I appreciate that you want to include me. I'm having an informal meeting with my supporters. Be there. We meet at midnight. My office. 
We can't go to a meeting at midnight. She's right. It'll be dark out. No, 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 there's something suspicious at the meetings at midnight. Our career is my department, and I say we're going. And I say we're not. Every time we get involved with Crawford, it's nothing but trouble. And career advancement is not enough of a reason to get behind that maniac. I agree. If we're going to get behind anyone, it's going to be a woman. <laughs> she has one of those nice pear-shaped butts. Nice kind of cassava melon. Pizza, and ice cream, sundae, and cake! That's a switch. I'm hungrier than I'm horny. <laughs> Is this your desk? Yes. What do you do? I do everything. What do you do? I do all her work while she's out doing everything. Harris, why the hell are you poking around in my department without my permission? Just taking a few notes. What do you estimate it costs to run this office? That's my business, Harris. Well, not really. See, I'm putting together my proposal on how I'd cut costs if I were installed as president of this company. And just what is your proposal? Well, it seems to me we could save a fortune if we used an outside research company. He's gonna cut our whole department! All right, all right, let's not panic. He's not president of the company yet. There are other candidates. Yeah, Crawford. All right, all right, let's panic. <laughs> And the only way to help them is to help Mr. Crawford. But I thought you said every time we get involved with Crawford, it's nothing but trouble. But what about our friends? We've got to do this. Ask nicely. <laughs> please, can we help Mr. Crawford? Nicer. Pretty, please. And who is the king of the brain? <laughs> you are. And who is a sissy faced dodo bird? I am. Who else is a sissy faced dodo bird? I am. Fine. We'll help Crawford. Mr. Crawford, it's me, Sherman. I'm in. Mr. Crawford? Mr. Crawford? Quiet, Sherman. Code names only. Call me Tinkerbell. <laughs> and I'll call you Herman. I'm wrong here. What's that stuff all over your face? It's burnt cork. On the weekends, I appear for the traveling minstrel show. Really? Of course not. That'd be lunacy. <laughs> we're here to plan a Watergate-style break-in. Watergate-style? You mean where we get caught, sent to prison, and find lucrative book deals? I like your optimism. <laughs> so let's take it one step at a time. Sit. Um, Mr. Crawford, I... Uh, 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 I'm sorry. Tinkerbell. <laughs> Where is everyone? I thought this was a meeting of all your supporters. It is. <laughs> what are we doing here? I need to get the goods on Roger Harris. Good? He's robbing the company blind. He's a shark. He's a great white shark. Well, I, on the other hand, am a hammerhead. <laughs> so where do I fit in? You. Well, you're a pilot fish. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. Would you rather be a sea cow and get eaten alive? <laughs> I don't think it would be right to break into Harris's office. I'm a managing editor, damn it. I can go into any office I choose. And what do you need me for? You'll be the lookout. <laughs> I don't want to be caught. <laughs> yes, but so what if you're wrong about Harris? Not wrong. I've known about his thievery for months. But like a cat, I waited to make the right move. <laughs> I thought you were a fish. Well, I, I guess I'm half cat and half fish. I'm a catfish. <laughs> Herman? Are you with me? This all sounds so immoral. I'm in. <laughs> Not that kind of immoral. I'm out. <laughs> Look, the fact is we haven't done anything wrong. He just wants us to stand in the hallway. I'm for it. We will help Mr. Crawford become the next president of this company and save our friend's job. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, Crawford thinks there's double dealing. He also thinks he's a catfish. <laughs> Herman, are you ready to go? I'm ready. I appreciate your support. And when this is all over, I promise I'll take care of it. Let's go. What's with the hat? Oh, I've had this since my army days. I was wearing it when I got shot, captured, and tortured. It's my lucky hat. <laughs> what are you doing, Eddie? 
Just printed out a new resume. We're gonna need it if we have to find new jobs. Could you check us the typos? I'd be glad to. Patty, you spent five years as a fiber optic neurosurgeon? <laughs> Come on, Louise, everyone has the resume a little. Yeah, you're right. I did the same thing. Look at this. Work experience, two years as assistant researcher at Watson Publishing. Louise, this isn't padded. Like hell it is, and I've only been here a year and nine months. <laughs> Oh, am I kidding? They're going to see right through my scam. Don't worry, Louise. I'm sure you'll find a job that doesn't require any skills. And I'm sure you'll survive, Hetty. Somehow you always manage to land on your back. <laughs> it's a gift. <laughs> the one I'm worried about, actually, is Mr. Brackett. I mean, we're young. We're resilient. But him, when he hits the pavement, flat. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Brackett. How's it going? It's a beautiful day out, isn't it, sir? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for asking. He's doing much better than he was yesterday. Hey, everybody. Hi, Herman. Any good job, Lee? You don't need to look for another job. We're not going to be fired. That's not what I hear. If Harris gets in, we're out. Yeah, well, don't worry about Harris. He's not going to be running this company. You know something we don't know? Just a hunch. I'm innocent! I'm innocent, I tell you! Hey, what's going on out there? I did not embezzle one dime from this company! Just a minute. I am vice president of this company. At least allow me the dignity of putting a jacket over my head. Looks like you were right, Herman. Happy to help. Help? What'd you do? Nothing, Eddie. It's just an expression. Hey, you hear the news? Heard it? We saw it. The police arrested Harris for embezzlement. That's old news, pal. I heard someone plant a file in his office. Security's going through the surveillance tapes right now. Surveillance tapes? Yeah. There are more hidden video cameras in this building than I got in my bedroom. <laughs> so you think they have this guy on tape? Well, that's what the police are hoping. Mr. Crawford? Oh, there you are, Sherman. What happened to your office? No longer my office. You've been fired? No. I am now the top dog, and as promised, you are my executive liaison in charge of corporate affairs. What's that? I don't know. I just made it up. <laughs> what are all the sheets for? So I can unveil your new office. I have a flair for the dramatic. <laughs> Presenting your desk. Mr. Crawford, people are saying Harris was set up. Your pen and pencil set. <laughs> they say that you planted a file in his office. Your name plate. <laughs> Look, Mr. Crawford, they're on to us. Security has a surveillance tape of me standing lookout. Not since Norman the Night Watchman became head of security, they don't. <laughs> Welcome aboard, Sherman. I don't like this at all. You heard Crawford. He destroyed the evidence. We're in the clear. What if we get caught? What is your problem? We have an office. We have a desk. We have a pen and pencil set. What are you so afraid of? Pretty much everything. <laughs> well, Sherman, I'm aboard. Good, good. Ah, just one more thing. Your new secretary. Make that my new secretary. There's no job here. Can't you see that? Oh, don't be ridiculous. I'm sure some work will come down the pike. No, he's right. Robert obviously created this job to pay us off for helping him in his illicit activities. What's done is done. Besides, it's quite possible that Crawford is completely on the up and up. Sherman, shred this. Yes, sir. Anything else? From now on, we tape all phone calls. Yes, sir. And on your way home, take this to the bus station and give it to a man named Cookie. You're right. We're doing God's work. Hi, Herman. Wow, wow, nice office. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, by the way, I heard you're looking for an assistant, and I know someone who's a hard worker, and I might add irresistibly cute. Louise, you're asking to be my assistant? Not me, Mr. Bracken. <laughs> Mr. Bracken is irresistibly cute? Would you hire him if I said he was gruff and annoying? <laughs> what are you talking about? Mr. Bracken has a job. Not anymore. None of us do. Mr. Crawford's dismantled the entire research department. We've all been fired. Harris was going to let people go, not Crawford. Yeah, well, your buddy Crawford's down turning the entire 26th floor into his office. What? He wouldn't do that. <laughs> Sherman 
Bracken's office. <laughs> Mr. Bracken? It's me. It's me, Louise. You got a job? I'm so proud of you. Oh, no thanks. No, I really don't need to buy any vitamins. <laughs> yes, I understand you work on commission, but I can't afford it. All right, all right, I'll take some easy. Just get off my back. <laughs> I don't care if it's a supporting wall. That's where I want my fountain. <laughs> Mr. Crawford, I have to talk to you. Chairman, welcome to my office. Mr. Crawford, I helped you take over this company to save my friend's jobs in the research room. Well, you're still employed here. And Hoppy's still here. Hoppy! Okay, so how about bone walls, the flood foot trim, and blood red carpet? Oh, God, no, that's the way my house is decorated. I never feel like I was getting away. Okay, then how about... Hey, what are you doing? I'm the decorator. Jim, how do you feel about gothic pictures and that? What are you doing in Mr. Bracken's office? It's not Mr. Bracken's office anymore. It's now Mr. Crawford's toilet. <laughs> Mr. Bracken spent 25 years sitting in that room. So will Mr. Crawford. Kenny, how can you do this? What about Louise and Mr. Bracken? Did you think about them before you took your job? Yes, I did. Well, I guess that's the difference between you and me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lot of work to do. Mr. Crawford wants a skylight right here. Teddy, there are 20 floors above this. Like I said, I've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> Mr. Krupp, you cannot dismantle the whole research room. I'm making it better. Putting a bathroom in there and a skylight up there. <laughs> oh, God, you're worse than Harris. Well, don't badmouth Harris. He had quite a few good ideas. It's a shame I had to squash him like a bug. <laughs> Mr. Crawford, I demand that you hire back the entire research department right now. You what? I respect your loyalty, but it's misplaced. I don't need you loyal to them, I need you loyal to me. Look, I've done a lot of things this past week that I'm ashamed of, but I did them to help my friends. Now, they're out in the street. Besides, it doesn't matter if Harris was dishonest. What we did was just as bad. Now, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. I'm out. Chairman, let me explain something to you. You helped me, and I rewarded you. You crossed me, I'll feed you to the lions. Did you hear that? He said he's gonna feed us to the lions. He was just speaking metaphorically. Then again, this is Crawford. He may have lions. Don't you see? We've made a terrible mistake. We have to stand up to that man. But what about my office? I want my office. No! He's turned on everyone else. He's bound to turn on us. Well, are you gonna stand up to him? I'm not gonna. <laughs> Don't look at me! Okay, we need our courage. We need our strength. We need our manhood. I think we need the big guy. We need your help. Well, who's the king of the brand? <laughs> you are. Who's a big goto since you had bird? You, you are. are. That's right. <laughs> and I'm just going to have to take matters into my own hands. Ooh, I'm a scared. <laughs> Mr. Crawford, I'm serious. Well, look at me, Sherman. I'm shaking. <laughs> All right, you asked for it. Herman, it's me, Tinkerbell. <laughs> How did you get in here? Through that hole in your bathroom wall. I don't have a hole in my wall. You do now. <laughs> Sherman, somebody ran at this house. Well, you forced my hand. It was you? What do you think that conversation was all about this afternoon? Uh, refresh my memory. You left me no choice. Someone had to say something. I went to the board of directors, I told them everything. How you set up Paris and how I helped you. Oh, this ship is going down. Sherman, pray with me. Mr. Crawford, pray, damn it. The whole plan was stupid. Double dealing is no way to get ahead. Here, sweet Sherman, you are so naive. Here's what we're gonna do. Mr. Crawford, it's over. Never. We have to be ruthless. We'll be like vultures. No, we are not gonna be like vultures or sea cows or lions or catfish. We're not sneaking around, breaking into people's offices or wearing lucky hats or talking to guys named Cookie. God, what the hell is wrong with you? You're a lunatic, you know that? You turned on me, Sherman. I'm alone. A lone wolf. <laughs> Will you stop with the animals already? <laughs> what am I gonna do now? Look, why don't you come clean? Talk to the board. Maybe they'll let you keep your job. I never 
thought it would end like this. Huh? Well, I, I think it's best. I'll, I'll always remember your loyalty. Because an elephant never... <laughs> Know why the hell Herman Ass is here? I don't know, but he better get back here quick because I got an interview to get to. What's the interview for? Ambassador to South Korea. <laughs> How in the world did you ever line that up? Relax. It's just an interview. <laughs> so, Eddie, how's your job? Mr. Crawford fired him yesterday morning. I accidentally had the high pressure fire hose hook up the toilet. <laughs> They had to pour him off of the jaws of life. Oh, my God. Was he angry? Hardly enough to enjoy it. <laughs> How about you, Mr. Bracken? Are you still hawking vitamins? No, I gave it up. I don't need a job. I've discovered I've been putting too much emphasis on work. A man is not defined by his career. I've cut back, and I'm at peace with that. Good news. I got everyone's job back. Thank God. I was bored out of my freaking mind. <laughs> Well, I told the board of directors how Crawford set up Harris and how I helped him. You helped him? Why? I thought by helping Crawford, I'd be saving everyone's job. So, the board is going to reinstate the research department. Harris goes back to his old job in there, deciding what to do with Crawford. Herman, you never should have gotten involved with Crawford, but I appreciate that you tried to help us. Your heart was in the right place, son. God only knows where your head was at. <laughs> You're right, sir. I'm going back down to my office. I'll be with you in a second, Mr. Bracken. I just want to savor my last few minutes as an executive. Looks like everyone's right back where they started from. Well, that's assuming the Korean ambassador thing falls through. Kermit! Just came to say goodbye. I'm, uh, going away for a while. Where are you going, Mr. Crawford? Oh, I can't tell you. Can't tell you. Just that there, there are no phones and, uh, Visiting day is Tuesday. <laughs> Allison end her affair with a married man? Find out on an all-new Melrose Place Wednesday. Flying Blind is next. Hi, Dave McCall from WCRRSM here. Flying Blind, followed by Whoop, up next on Fox TV 8.